Welcome to Piano Video Lessons. I'm Lisa, and today we're working on Bore by Christoph Grubner. This piece is in D minor, and it's a grade one level Baroque piece. This is part of unit nine at pianovideolessons.com, and it's also unit two of year two. In this lesson, we'll be working on stage one of learning this piece, which means we'll be learning the basics. We're going to get the rhythm, notes, and fingering played accurately, and we're going to um, get the stage set for being able to play this piece really well. So come on over to pianovideolessons.com, just click the info card where you can get a copy of the ebook and also the practice plan is in there. Uh, there's a nice study guide that goes with this piece and a sheet on the characteristics of Baroque music. It also includes the sheet music for the other pieces in this unit. So in this level of learning, we're working on fingering notes and rhythm. And these are the, the, the staples, the foundation of getting this piece learned. This is probably the hardest piece in this unit, in unit nine, and we saved it for last on purpose. But something cool about it, and this might inspire you to work hard on it, is that this piece was found in the notebook that was written or compiled, I should say, by Leopold Mozart. And he was the father of the famous Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And this is one of the pieces, the book was called For Wolfgang, and it was one of the pieces that he intended that uh, young Wolfgang would learn as he was learning to play the pianoforte, or the piano as we call it now. The piece is in D minor, and it's a bourre, and we have talked about what a bourre is in our first lesson uh, when we learned a bourre by Bach. So a bourre is a dance from the Baroque era, and it's written in cut time. So when we, when we play through this piece, we're going to be counting the half notes. So we're going to be counting one, two, one, two, one, Two. And this piece is also in D minor, so you should refresh your D minor technical requirements. You should play your D minor scales as well as your D minor triads, just to get the sound of D minor and the notes of D minor into your mind and your fingers. Um, because the piece is a bourre, it's also in binary form, which means it has an A section and a B section. And when we play this, it's a good idea to maybe just learn those sections one by one. So we'll first learn the A section of the piece, and then we'll go through and learn the B section. So beginning with the A section, we're going to start off a little bit hands separately, and we're going to work on the fingering. So we like to compare each note to figure out which finger comes next. And so here it shows to play a five and then a neighbor note and a repeated note and then a neighbor note, a neighbor note, and then up a neighbor and then it shows a one. So we're just using the distance between the notes to inform which finger to play next. Then we have one repeat and then up to four. Now if you're not used to doing this, I recommend that you check out um, unit three of piano video lessons where we talk a little bit about how to determine fingering based on intervals which is really the key to being a good sight reader. Um, so now we're here on four and then it's going down, 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 then we cross over to our two and then up to three, and then down, up, skip, and then move your one because it says finger one. And then from this one, on the note A, we're going up from A all the way up to an F. Now it's not marked in, but we're going to play this with a five, and it's the same as it was on line one. So again, five, five, uh, five, four, four, three, two, three, one, one, and then four comes in, four, down, down, one, and we can cross over and then play our three back on that F. You could also play your thumb, doesn't matter, you could go one, two, one, but we're not going to be connecting these notes, so any finger you use to cross down is going to work. Um, so that's the fingering for the right hand. Now we could do the same thing for the left hand. It's four, up to three, up to two, up to one, and then here we have a note that doesn't have a finger number on it. It's a C sharp, and we're going to have to go down to A. So I'm going to assign this a three, and this will be a five, and that will enable me to play my thumb as I move in here to reach this. So that was not written in, but I think it's a helpful finger to use. So one and then three, skip to five, and then one, two, and this will reach also down to five. 
Then we have 4, 3, 2, 1, and then this is the same thing. So we're going to have 3, 5, and then 1, 2, 5. Now this reach here, 1, 2, 5, it spans an octave, and it plays a note here that's a fifth above the lower octave. And this is something that we've seen before. In unit 5, if you took uh, all of the piano video lessons units, we were doing chord study. So we were playing pop music or playing music using lead sheets and um, the left hand had different patterns for the chords. And this is the 158 pattern. It's an accompaniment pattern, except it's going in reverse. And we get used to this feeling because you're gonna, it's gonna be all over the place. It happens three times in this piece of music, but it happens um, a ton in music, period. So be on the, on the lookout for that little pattern when you're playing. Uh, and so we got all the way to the end for the fingering here for the A section. So I'm just going to mark that we did that for the A. I'm just going to put the name of the piece on here. It's the Bore. And there's an accent on there, but my computer didn't put one. Um, and that's not an A minus. <laughs> that's just an A. We did it for the A section. Um, so now we're going to work on the notes. So the first thing I like to do, I call note flashes, and we're going to play just the notes that have finger numbers written on them. And here it has a five for the right hand, so we're going to play an F. And then here it has a one, we're going to play an A. Here it has a four. This is a B flat because we're in the key of D minor. Then we're going to have a one on F, a two on E, a three on F, a one on A, then we have a 5 on F again, 4 on B flat, 1 on F. And then we'll do the same thing for the left hand. So we're going to start with our 4 here on D, and then we have 1 on G, then we have 3 down on C sharp, nice. Then we have 1 on D, 2 on A, and 5 on D. Moving our 4 in to D, then we have 1 on G, 3 on C sharp, 1 on D. Now, if you have trouble reading your notes, you may want to review that. I have a note speller. You can check for that playlist on YouTube or find the unit on pianovideolessons.com. Uh, it's just a quick review of all of the notes, lines and spaces, and ledger lines uh, for piano. All right, so we've gone through the note flashes. Now we're going to add the fingering to the note flashes and play all of the notes. So we're going to go ahead with the right hand and we're going to start here with A, and then we're going to play 5 on F, and then down, repeat, and then down, sharp, up. Now 1 on A, repeat, 4 on B flat, down, neighbor, down, neighbor, down, neighbor, 2 over, and now 3 on F, then down, up, down, a skip. Move our 1 to A, 5 is on F, neighbor, down, repeat, neighbor, down, up. Now this was a one in the first line. You can write this in or you can just remember that that's how we did it the first time. One is on A, repeat, four on B flat, going down, 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 crossing over, and then an F. Now we can do the same thing for the left hand. Again, we're just reading the note flashes and playing that note and then checking to see what interval distance the next note is and one here, now three on C sharp, down, oop, down a skip. Now one is on D, two is on A, five is on D. And now we're gonna play our four on D, up a neighbor, up a neighbor, up a neighbor, three down to the sharp, skip, one on D, and we recognize that distance as our 158 pattern, or 851, because it's in reverse. So those are the notes for the A section played with the correct fingers. Now we're going to think about the rhythm and this one's a little tricky because it's in 2-2 two, two time. Cut time is just another way of saying two half notes per measure. Common time is 4-4 four, four time and that's what it kind of looks like because you see there's four quarter notes. But the style of the bourre is to feel 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we don't count four. We count half notes. So here uh, we're going to be counting and one and two and a one and two and one and two and one and a two and. So when I have a TT, I'm counting the number 
but it's usually just like the half of a beat. In this case, it's always landing on the and, so it's anda. If I had four TTs or four eighth notes in a beat, it would be one neanda, anda, one neanda, two eanda. We don't ever have anything that quickly in this piece, but several times we have one anda, two ands. So we're going to have anda for all of these. So here's anda, and here's one anda, here's two anda. And that's it for the first section. So the right hand, again, it's going to go and one and two and a one and two and one and two and one and a two and one and two and a one and two and one and two and one and two. Now the bore always starts on a pickup note right here. We have a pickup on and at the beginning of the piece. A bore always starts with a quarter note pickup. It's one of the characteristics of this dance. So that's the rhythm for the right hand. The left hand goes one, two, one, two, and one, two, one, and two, and one, two, one, two, and one, two, one, and two. All right, so there's less going on for the left hand. Let's try doing both hands together now, tapping the rhythm. Here we go. And one, and two, and a one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and a two, and one, and two, and a one, and two, and one, and two, and one and two. All right, so that was both hands tapping. So we now have figured out the rhythm for both hands. Now we're going to go ahead and try to play it with both hands using the right fingers on the right notes with the right rhythm. So here we go. I'll start with nice and slow. We're going to play five and four, neighbor down, same note, reaching for four on B flat here. Now three goes down to A, D, uh, C sharp. Now it's on A, crossing, three, reach. So that might have been really hard. And if it was, then it's not, no surprise. <laughs> um, you could take it apart and just do the right hand. And one and two. And a one and two and one and two and one and a two and and then do just the left hand one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and practice that until you can do it and then put it together and one and two and uh, stop if you need to one and two and one and two and one reach and uh, two hop and so you want to practice that slowly maybe just work on the second half here where you have to hop down one and two and and then this big reach and then the next line is quite similar. One, uh, starting on F. One and two, and a one and two, and one and two, and one. Hopping down, one and two, and. So there's a lot of similarity, just that last part ends differently. Uh, now we can work on the B section. So we're going to go through the same method that we just did working on uh, first on the fingering. So it's four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, then two, three, up to four, three, up to four, five, one, one. Now my hand did not have to move at all. Some finger numbers were written in there, but they were just to help with the sharps and, and uh, natural. Then we move our four to this 
uh, E. And then we have five, because we go up a note, four, four, and this is like the beginning, three, two, three, one, one, and then bring your four in, down, 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 cross to a sharp, and land on three. So there's something different that happens at the end here, but it's very similar to the beginning. It just changes starting right here. Back to the left hand, fingering two, skip, four, up to one because it's one note higher than that first note was, which was a space note. Now same, and then down, and then neighbor, and then neighbor. Next line, we have three, up to two, up to one, crossing over to two, up to one, reach the five. Then we have one, and then two, five. That's that eight, five, one pattern that we were doing before. So that's the fingering for the B section, both hands. And then we'll do our note flashes and our notes. So here's the first flash, four on D two on B natural, three on C sharp, four on E, and four on G. One on D, two on C sharp, three on D. And left hand, two on E, and three on D, two on G, five on A, one on D. And then we'll go through and play all of the notes using our note flashes and our fingering. So four on D, repeat, down, repeat, down, repeat, down, repeat. Now don't forget there's a B flat there. You could circle that or draw a box around it or something so that you remember. Do not write B flat on here. Do not write flat on here. It's your job to read those notes and you need to remember that Bs are flat in the key of D minor and you need to remember that that's a B and if you write it in, you're robbing yourself of the chance to learn it. So we just finished here uh, with our two A's. Now we're going to go B natural and then three on C sharp to D, C sharp to D, and then E down a fifth to finger one. Four on E, then we go up, down, repeat, down, down, up, thumb on A. You can write that one in if you need to, but it's the same reach we've been doing all along. A, A, now this is where it's different. We're gonna bring our four down to this G, down, 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 two on C sharp, and three on D. So those are right hand notes. Left hand notes, we start with two on E, and then we skip, then we go up past to our thumb. We play that note again, down, down, there's the sharp. That's gonna be just a neighbor, it's just finger four. Then we have three, up, two, up, one, finger two, and then one octave down, five, and then one, two, five. Some people like to circle the finger notes the fingerings that involve your hand moving to a new position. So anytime you're shifting to a new spot, just circle the finger number to help you remember that you need to move somewhere. So let's see now, we've done the accurate notes for the B section, and now we're gonna do the rhythm. So it's very easy rhythm compared to the first section. So let's go ahead, or it's very similar rhythm, I guess. Let's go ahead and tap it with both hands. So we're gonna have and one and two and. You can write that in if you want to. And one and two and one and two. One, we're counting half notes because we're in two, two time or cut time. One, two, one, two, one, two. And you can say and in between to show where all the quarter notes are. So here we go. We're going to start here. And one and two. And one and two. And one and two. And one and two. Next line. One and two. And a one and two. Both, both, and both and both left, left. All right, so that is the rhythm for the B section. So now you can do hands separately and work on placing the notes with the rhythm and the right fingers, or you can go right in hands together, but let's do it hands separately first. So we're gonna have counting out loud, and, so we're starting four on D, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one and two and one and two four on e one and two and a one and two cross and one and two and one and 
too. Anything that's tricky, just take it out and practice it by itself, counting out loud. And then we have left hand and one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and next line one and two and one and two up and one and two and one and two now we'll try it with both hands and you can stop anytime you need to think and plan something just make sure you're counting out loud because then your brain knows you've stopped counting and you've just hit the pause button and then when you resume playing and counting your brain knows that you've resumed and things are still um, accurate so here we go nice and slow and one and two and one and two if you need to just break that down and practice it you can I'm finishing that measure now and one and two and one and two and on the next line i'm going to be playing finger five and three on d one and two and a one and two cross and one and reach two and one reach and two so quite a lot happening on this line here um you might need to take it in smaller sections just working on two measures at a time so that would take us through this part one and two and a one and two with this change because that's new and from there we could start right at that star and one and reach two and cross over then reaching down so practicing the small sections that you need to in order to get the piece flowing um, all the way through with your understanding of the measures and the beat and the fingering and the rhythm. Now I'm going to play it through for you once and I'm going to invite you to join me in video number two where we're going to clean this up to get the tempo going steadily all the way through. We're going to look at articulation and dynamics to get this piece being played a little bit more or accurately with all the details. All right, so here I go. I'll give it a play and I'll see you in the next video.